So consider a pair of ellipses uh, that are concentric, the black, these two black ellipses are not axis aligned. And uh, let's assume that their parameters have been chosen in such a way that the pair admits uh, a one-dimensional family of Poncelet three periodic. So what is a Poncelet three periodic? You pick a point on the boundary, you find a tangent to the inner ellipse, then you find a second point on the boundary of the outer one, then you find a tangent, and you find a tangent. So if you're going to be doing this, you're going to come back to point P1. So uh, by Poncelet's porism, if you can find one closed trajectory, you can choose any other starting point P1 on the boundary, and the trajectory under the same Poncelet iteration is guaranteed to close. Okay, so we have one such pair <coughs> in here. Okay, now here we want to talk about a very interesting invariant of uh, you know this uh, concentric pair with some generic tilt between the two ellipses. Uh, let's first of all recall what the anti-complement of a particular point with respect to a triangle is. Okay, so let's take this uh, blue triangle as being our triangle of reference, and I'm interested in computing the anti-complement of the center, the common center O. Uh, the anti-complement of the of the common center O. What does anti-complement mean? It means that, first of all, you need to calculate the barycenter, x2, of this triangle, p1, p2, p3. What's the barycenter? In the case of a triangle, you can simply average the three vertices, <clears throat> and you get the barycenter. What's finally the anti-complement? <clears throat> You're going to reflect the point of interest, in our case O, on x2, and you're going to do a sort of a double length reflection. So the anti-complement of O represented here as O prime is a double length reflection of O with respect to X2. So the, si the distance between O prime and X2 is twice the distance between X2 and O. So O prime is collinear with X2 and O, and it's called the anti-complement of O. You can do this for any point on the plane of a triangle. You can take a point over here, look at the distance of X2, and reflect and go all the way out there. Okay, but here for this particular invariant that we're going to demonstrate, we're interested in the anti-complement of the common center of the two of the, the Poncelet ellipse pair. Okay, so as I move my uh, triangle around, the position of O prime, the anti-complement, is going to move around like so. Okay, by the way, just as a note, O is known as the complement of O prime. It's the inverse uh, operation. So if you take a point on the plane of a triangle, the complement of that point is a reflection about the body center, but now it's a half-length reflection. So you can go in the anti-complement direction from O to O prime, or you can go in the complement direction from O prime back to O. Okay. Now, uh, as you just saw here, as I move my family, the anti-complement of the center is moving around, like so, always keeping its distance from X2 to be twice the distance of X2 to the point of interest O, so this is what we get. All right, of course, an interesting question here that I haven't investigated is what's the locus of O prime uh, as I move my family around? Is it a, uh, it's probably gonna be an ellipse because uh, the locus of X2 is an axis aligned ellipse. We've seen this in another video. And then you just have the scaling arm here. But let's go back to the true subject of this, uh, of this video. I want to suggest a, uh, an interesting construction. I'm going to run Sivians. I'm going to connect each one of the vertices of the blue triangle Sivians through O prime. And I want to intersect those Sivians with the outer ellipse. So let's draw those. So here's O prime. What is a Sivian? I'm going to take a vertex of my reference polygon and I'm going to draw a straight line through that uh, center point O prime. And I'm going to intersect the extension of that sieve with my outer ellipse. That's going to give me one vertex of this pink red triangle. And I'm going to repeat this. I'm going to draw a sieve from P2 to O prime. And I'm going to get a second vertex of the pink polygon. And likewise from P3 through O prime. And I'm going to get a third vertex of the pink polygon. So now I have two triangles. I have this original triangle. And now I have something that is similar to the concept of a circum Sivian triangle except that I'm not intersecting uh, the Sivians with the circumcircle of the blue triangle, but with the circumellipse, the stationary circumellipse centered at O. So I'm calling this, just for fun, 
the circumellipsivian triangle. Circumellipsivian, you know, as opposed to the circumcivian. All right. Now, what's the beautiful property here? It turns out that if you do this construction, the ratio of, of areas of the blue triangle divided by the area of the pink triangle shown over here, A is the area of the outer triangle, or the blue triangle, and A prime is the area of the uh, circumellipsivian triangle, that ratio is invariant over the family. Let's run the family here very slowly so we can watch this. So just watch this number here. This number is numerically constant to uh, whichever um, precision you desire. And these two triangles, they're not homothetic. Uh, there's probably some interesting relationship between them. Now, is it only valid for this particular configuration I've picked? Let's try a different configuration. Okay, so I'm going to now, maybe I'm going to change a little bit the aspect ratio of the outer ellipse. Let's go to, it was at 1.5. Let's go to 1.8. And now you can see here that my, let's turn off the construction, you can see here that my, if I just change the outer ellipse to have aspect ratio 1.8, my three periodic family no longer closes, so I have to run a little optimization, tilt only, like so. And uh, now I have a family that closes. Uh, let's look at the family. There it is. Okay. And I can do the same construction. Let's draw the O anti complement. There it is. So O prime is the anti-complement of the center on this new pair, right? The tilt has changed. Let's draw the anti, the, the circumellipsivian triangle. So I draw the three sevians to the anti-complement of O on this new pair. And I can now watch, and it looks like at A over B equals 1.8, I'm getting something that looks like a rational number here, which is an interesting thing in itself. But let's animate the family, and let's verify the fact that, again, the ratio of areas is not changing. So it's like four thirds right now at A over B equals 1.8. Okay, let's do a. <clears throat> actually, we started this exploration with a simpler pair. We started the exploration when we had, for example, a confocal pair. So now I have, let's, uh, let's change this guy a little bit. Let's make the, the inner ellipse. A little, yeah, I like to go back to 1.5 maybe. So let's go to 1.5 here. Um, and we're going to take the confocal pair. Here's the confocal pair. Now your axis aligned. Obviously, you're still concentric, but now the two ellipses share foci. Now let's do the construction here. Uh, it turns out that the center of such a pair is a meeting point x9. And the uh, anti complement of x9, you can look it up on uh, the Encyclopedia of Triangle Centers is uh, the jargon point, x7. That's the anti-complement of O. We're not going to label those. I'll simply draw the anti-complement. So you just uh, bear in mind that O right now is x9 and O prime is x7, the jargon point. Well, I can repeat the, the construction. There it is. So now I have this circumellipsivian triangle, the pink triangle, uh, with respect to the jargon point of the blue triangle. And this is a circumellipse centered on the meeting point. So as we make this guy turn, you can see here that the property is preserved. Let's do another pair. Let's do the pair with the in circle, uh, which I believe is over here. Um, how do they do that? I think like that. Yeah, so here's a pair with the in circle. Uh, the pair with the in circle has always uh, is the in center by definition. And uh, the, the, I don't recall now what the anti-complement of x1 is. We have to look it up somewhere on ETC. But O prime now is the anti-complement of, of that pair, uh, of that uh, center point. And we can check here. I'll put it in the notes what that anti-complement is. We can see here that by simply computing generic anti-complement O prime of the center of a concentric ellipse pair that uh, admits a three periodic family, you always get this property. So it doesn't matter. You can go back to the general position situation. Uh, you you uh, you give the inner ellipse, you know, some flesh. You go like that, and then perhaps you're going to tilt it a little bit. Uh, you have to find, of course, uh, a set of. Uh, so now it's pretty skinny. Let's go ahead and solve that. 
And uh, here's a general position or a general tilt concentric pair, which admits a three periodic family. You calculate the uh, anti complement respect to the center, and you get this so called circum ellipsivian triangle. And then the result here is that via an, aff an affine argument that we shall, um, we shall document, uh, you get uh, this, um, uh, this property. Notice that all the systems that we talked about so far are affine images of one canonical system you might take as a can canonical system, the one with the in-circle, concentric system with the in-circle. But this entire construction is, is a finely um, uh, identical to the in-circle one. This is the affine image of the in-circle system. And therefore, uh, all the constructions that we're doing here only involve um, uh, intersections and ratios of, of uh, lengths and areas. So via this affine argument, we can prove this generic result by hopefully, uh, pretty soon we're going to prove this just for one of the canonical systems, say, the, the one of the in circle. But it's pretty neat. And uh, the cool thing here is that there might be some interesting um, properties to this derived triangle, which we're calling the, the circumelipsivian. Uh, where are its triangle centers? There are many things that we could study here. Perimeter area, triangle center loci, and the correspondence of its triangle centers with those of the reference triangle in uh, one of the canonical or axis-aligned Poncelet configurations. All right. Well, that was it for this video. I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you.